Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, boy, it's really uh, cooled down here uh, in southern Ohio, and it's acting a little bit more like hunting season. Uh, pretty much about all I do is deer hunt. I uh, do a little bit of turkey hunting in the fall, but in the spring, of course, we're too busy to do that with the greenhouse. Uh, and I never really started deer hunting until about 10, 12 years ago because I was in the dairy business with my brother and my dad and the times to hunt were pretty much precisely when I was in the milk parlor milking cows. So as a family, we never hunted. And when I got married, I started hunting with my wife's family. I really fell in love with it and eventually went to a crossbow and uh, now a compound bow. But I really do love bow hunting. I thought uh, today that I would kind of go over a few of the things that I have in my pack. Um, I've kind of learned over the years things that work for me and things that don't. And I've kind of got it narrowed down pretty simple. And I kind of thought I would show you what I use. Uh, the first, first thing I use is a Bear Attitude Compound Bow. And I chose this bow, first of all, I, ch I shoot left-handed. So I kind of had to special order this bow, but um, I chose this bow because it's very light and it's very small and it's easy to carry through the woods uh, and get in your tree stand. Um, that's the reason I picked it. It's got plenty of power. I've killed several deer with it. It's not been a problem and it's a fairly inexpensive bow. So uh, that was another reason I didn't want to invest a huge amount of money in, in, uh, in something to deer hunt with. I use a, uh, a true fire release and it's got a little hook system here um, let's see there if you uh, if you push on this that's what releases the arrow uh, it cannot that string can't come out of that hook never has I've used this release for about four years now so it's proven itself pretty well I've got a little tacticam camera on my bow I do that mainly just for myself just kind of uh, go home and and I'll I'll film deer, and you know that I don't necessarily even want to shoot at. I'll just film them and kind of get an idea of, of what's in the woods and have an idea of what'll be there next year. So it's kind of fun to watch through the winter too uh, when you can't hunt. So that was the main reason for getting the tactic cam. Uh, some of the things that I found that work really well. Um, I use this little pack rack. It's a little rattler. Uh, very, very easy to use. Comes apart there in two pieces and you basically just work it back and forth. Sounds really, really similar to antlers rattling and you don't have to move much to use it so you're not giving yourself away too bad. It's worked well for me. In fact, it worked uh, really well this, this year. I'll put a picture of the buck that I have gotten this year already and uh, I rattled that. It was on the first morning I uh, rattled that at first light. He walked right in 12 yards. So this year's a little different. The deer are acting a little different here. He seemed almost like he was, uh, it was rut. He come in mad. So he was ready to fight when he heard that rattle. But that has worked for me really well in early season, it seems, more so than in late season. Now we we'll get into this time of the year. Um, I've got a, got a little grunt here. It's a Primo's Buck Roar, um, and I'll use it just about only in the rut. So we're looking at, at something that you can use after the 1st of November, usually. It, it works better than it seems. A lot of times you use this early in the season, and you'll actually scare deer off. Uh, sometimes it'll bring in the does, but the big mature bucks, they don't want to fight. So they'll usually just kind of lay back early season. Now, when you get into the rut, it seems like it, it works a whole lot better. And I've had them to come in multiple times with that. Another thing I always carry in the woods with me is a little saw. And I'll see if I can... And there it is extended out. I just turned the knob here, and uh, that saw extends out. It's always nice to have that with you if you, uh, if you use a climber, as I do sometimes. Uh, you'll start up a tree and you'll need to take a limb off. Um, very handy, very small, very light. So that, that's a favorite of mine. And that's a Gerber. I don't use this very much, but it's a, a little range finder, Pro Staff, Nikon. 
or Nikon. Uh, I use it a little bit, not a whole lot. Usually, uh, about the only time that I'll use this is when I first set in the tree, I'll kind of find some uh, yardage from my tree. It usually goes in the pack and stays there. Uh, where we live, uh, it's, it's quite brushy. It's rare that you're going to get a shot out past 40 yards. Very rare. Uh, too many trees and brush in the way. Uh, but I do use that when I first get in the stand. And that is the reason. I do have a, a little pair of Bushnell binoculars. Um, but I, they're almost useless here. I mean, you, you can watch out a little bit. But early season up till uh, the, the middle of the rut, there's just too much brush. You're not going to see much with those. I do use them some. Something that has just been so valuable to me is this this right here. This uh, has a clip on the end of it, and this extends out on a cord for 25 feet. And you can hook that to your bow. It's attached to your belt. And you climb the tree, pull it up. The string then retracts. It's on spring-loaded inside of this. It retracts back into this. That is a wonderful find that I've had for about five, four or five years now. Man, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It eliminates all the strings on your stand and, and having to worry about carrying string and all that. Very nice. If you can come across one of these, man, they work. I use a little bit of scent control also. Um, usually I will shower in it and I wash my clothes in it. I spray with this just before I go into the woods. Now, I am not convinced that it's very much benefit. I mean, I think it does, but it's like everything else. If you are sitting in the wrong wind, I don't care what you do, you're busted. So it might help some, but, uh, but really and truly, the wind is what you need to watch more than anything else. And uh, that's the most important thing. But these are just a few of the things that I use uh, when I deer hunt. And we do eat the meat, and I'm probably going to go out some this week. The temperature is right, and uh, I think the deer will be will be out. I have a feeling we're probably going to have an early rut. Of course, I'm only after does now, but uh, in, here in Ohio, we are in my county. We're allowed one buck and two does, so I haven't uh, killed anything but the one buck so far. And I think I'm going to try to get me a couple of those, but probably just one with the bow, and then one during gun season when I hunt with uh, with my brother-in-law and father-in-law. So uh, I'll probably do a video whenever I go out um, here in a day or two, and uh, kind of show you uh, where I'm at and, and some of the spots where I hunt. So I just wanted to show you what I use, and everybody has their own opinion on on this, but this is what works for me. And I used to carry a pack full of stuff. I've got it narrowed down to this. It's easier going in and out. And it works for me. So just thought I would kind of show you this. Thank you guys for watching. Catch up to you on the next video. Wouldn't you know that when you're doing a video about things that you use, you would forget something. So we're going to have to do a little PS on this. This is something that's really been critical to me over the years. Um, it's a little fireless smoke puff and you just kind of puff that out I don't know if you can see it on the video or not but it shows you wind direction very useful i will use it going in i'll try to keep uh, the wind in my face going into my stand and of course once you get to the stand um, you want to keep the wind to your face so you'll have to watch that wind the entire time that you're in that tree and there's been plenty of times that i have climbed down out of the tree because the wind changes and leave that area you're just wasting your time if you don't. So that's one thing that I use there that uh, is just invaluable. And I use a Rage um, tip. Um, it's a two blade, cuts two, just a little over two inches. And uh, they are deadly. It's a mechanical. Uh, it opens when it hits and very rare does a deer survive that? Uh, even with uh, unfortunate bad shots, you uh, you can find that deer maybe the next day, but it is deadly. 
really happy with those with the rage so those are just two other things that i use and i just about forgot those but uh, the little smoke the little puff there is really nice for wind direction that's something you have got to watch continually a lot of times when you walk into the woods if you walk in and that winds at your back uh, you've shot yourself in the foot before you ever get to the tree um, because you've scared deer out that you never knew were there so that's important and uh, i use it all the time i'll just carry it in my hand and uh, use it continually going in and use it often while i'm there so that's just a couple other things